welcome to Sojourns. Let's journey into sewing. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris, and this is Sojourns, where we journey into sewing. Welcome back to the sewing room. Well, I'm back today with a brand new pattern. I always love to give you a pattern review when new patterns come out. Spoiler alert, I love it. <laughs> pattern today is from my very favorite pattern company, Itch to Stitch. And I tested this brand new pattern and happy to say, as with almost all of her patterns, it came out perfectly and I ended up sewing two. So let's get right into it. Today I bring you the Zacopone Twist V-neck Knit Top. I have it on here today. And this is a simple top with a big payoff. I'm gonna step up here a little bit and show you there's a really unique V-neck twist. And don't be intimidated, it's easy to do. First, let's go through. So this pattern, the Zacopone pattern, as with all itch to stitch patterns, comes in sizes zero, zero through 40. It is made for knit fabrics and you'll want to use knit fabrics that have a good flow to them, but also very good recovery because it does have a stretch across the bust and with this v-neck you want to make sure that it has a little bit of recovery and you don't want anything too bulky you don't want to use ponte or scuba because this knit this knot this twist in the v-neck will become very bulky this is a rayon spandex of a good medium weight and so it lays well it has excellent recovery and I, I just, it feels great, but it lays really well on the body and it fits really nice in the shoulders because you just need that recovery. You're also going to need that recovery for creating the V-neck. It is not a band. This is folded over with a binding, but there is no stretching of the binding because with a V-neck, you're putting it over your head. There's no need to stretch it like you would with a crew neck or your regular t-shirt band. And it's hemmed. It comes in short sleeves, which I'll show you. And this one I've done in the long sleeves in this lightweight to medium rayon spandex. I would say it's more of a medium with a brushed feel. It's a great transition piece. I'll be able to wear this for the next few months as we get into the hotter weather, uh, especially if I'm going in air conditioning. It's perfect for that. This does lay, and I'll show you later because it's camera's not quite low enough, but this does come to the, I would say, mid hip. So it's not a tunic. It's not below your hip, nothing I would wear with leggings, but it's certainly not high hip or a crop top. So medium hip, short sleeves and long sleeves, has a seam down the front because you need to make that twist. And it's really neat how that's made because you do cut on the fold for this little bit, but then the rest is open. And so you take one side and twist it and twist it again to create the V-neck. Super cute, well-fitting. And because it's a new release, this pattern, the Zacopone top, is on sale for 20% off. Below in the description box, you'll find my affiliate link right to that top at the 20% off price. There's no need to put a code in or anything like that. Thank you for using my affiliate link. It supports my channel and I appreciate that. And if you are not a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe and click the bell so you'll get a notification when I post my next content. And if you are a subscriber, thanks for being here. I love it when you share my videos, my channel with other sewists. We do have a So You Can segment today because this is the second Zacopone top I made in testing and I am wearing the size 10 with an eight waist and a 10 hip. Just go by your full bust and your hip. You will see that Kenneth in Itch to Stitch always puts the body measurements, which is how you choose your size. And then she also puts the finished measurements. That way you can see how much ease there is, whether it's positive or negative ease. So if your hips are 40 and you see that the finished garment has a 42 and that's too much ease, you can go down a size there. Or if it's not enough ease, you can go up a size there. And in the tutorial, she always shows you how to blend your sizes, whether it's in or out, but you will choose by your full bust. 
there's also two choices. There is the regular bust piece or there's a full bust piece. And the tutorial will explain to you how to choose the full bust piece. And I believe if your difference between your upper bust, that is under your armpits and around the chest, and your full bust, if that difference is either three or four, if it's three or four inches greater or more, you'll choose the full bust piece. That is already made larger for the cup without making the armhole bigger, without making other things bigger. It just accommodates a fuller bust and you'll want to choose that. I use the standard bust. For. And uh, you know, the front seam is always flattering. Now it's necessary because this is a twist top, but it's always really flattering. So, in the So You Can segment today, it's just all about creating clean finishes. So after I created my first twist top with the tech with a textured knit, I liked the way it worked. I thought the tutorial was easy to follow and my top came out great. But there were some finishes and some little construction things that I would just choose to do differently. You know, Hundred sewing is in a hundred percent rules. There are many, many ways to do things, which is really neat because as you grow in your sewing, you'll learn different ways to finish something or construct something. That's neat. I, when I find a different technique, it just adds to the library of knowledge that you have and makes your sewing more fun, more professional. So I show you some ways that I finished this, I finished this nice clean V and I finished the inside here. Some ways that I did that during construction that I didn't do with my original. So just a few changes. Let me bring you in that original top because the fabric really makes it. So here we have on the model, the first one I made in testing. And you can see that the really cute detail, which is this twist V-neck, really shows up here with this textured knit. And this is so cute on. So this is a textured athletic knit. And it's, um, I would say medium weight, light to medium weight, not too light, it's actually perfect. But this is a solid and this is a textured knit. And I think that you have to be careful with this, which patterns you might use, pattern fabrics. Probably would not choose a large floral print because when you do this twist, you're going to have those flowers askew, which I don't think looks really good for placement. If it's an all over small print and it's all over and there isn't a flower here and here and specific places, it will look adorable. I may not use a geometric depending on the geometric. If it is a small geometric, the same with the small flowers and there isn't a definite pattern, it will be cute. I would not use stripes because they'll look askew. You know, stripes you want to be precise and match them up, so I wouldn't choose those. There are plenty of options for patterned blouses, but I really like this in the textured knit. I think it gives it a whole other dimension and it's perfect with jeans. This one's great. This is actually a like an indigo, it has blue with some purpley gray in it and it looks really cute. You'll see it, I paired it with a navy blue denim uh, skirt and it looks really, really cute. And with this one for the modeled shots, I paired it with stretch velvet flared knit pants and little booties and it's great. So you can take this anywhere. So you have your front seam. This is the short sleeve. I did lengthen my short sleeve about five eighths of an inch. That's where I prefer it to hit my arm. And I needed to take an inch off of my sleeve in length. That is standard for me. So you'll just measure your arm and, and take that into consideration. The V is made by binding that you put together before you sew the second shoulder. So you'll sew the first shoulder and then lay out your fabric. And you'll see this in the Sew You Can segment. So. Why don't we get to that now? I will show you the few little choices that I made to do differently on this melon colored blouse because I wanted there to be cleaner finishes. So why don't we get into So You Can and then join me back here and I'll show you my modeled shots of both blouses, which I really love. Here we go. This is the front 
of the top and that portion right down the center is where your twist is going to be in that center front seam. And I learned from my first one, which was the short sleeve version, that I wanted to have cleaner edges, especially at the place where the twist comes in. So I have just surged along that edge. Let me bring it in for you. All I did was surge along that edge with my knife disengaged. So I'm not cutting anything off. I'm just finishing the edge prior to beginning the construction of the blouse. Another thing that I did different after my test version was, this is the back bodice. I just did a stay stitch right along the stitching line instead of using the stabilizing tape. I felt it's much easier on this curved back. It's just the way I like to do it. And on the shoulders, I use clear elastic to stabilize as well instead of the tape. Let me move in here, right along the stitch line. That's just a straight stitch. And here's my video of the clear elastic that is used to stabilize the shoulder seams. I've shown you how I've done this before on my serger with the little slit on my foot. I'll link that technique in the description box below if you wanted to refer to it. So here I have pinned the neck tape or the neck band right sides together with the blouse. And I'm gonna come in here a little closer and show you two tricks or two things I've done a little bit differently. First of all, you'll see here that I have created a little memory hem. I have folded a half an inch up towards the wrong side all the way around because I want to have a very clean finish on the inside of the blouse when we're done. That's where I differ a little with the tutorial that has you trim that and then finish it somehow. And then where the V-neck is, that's right here in the center. You see this bit of wonder tape I have right here in the middle? I have the tiniest little piece of wonder tape holding that, that's temporary basting tape, holding that band to the V part because I know that it wants to slip out from there and I want a very even seam right along there and that just washes out with water you can a little spray bottle or you can just put it in the laundry the first time and it'll come right out it'll dissolve so now i'm going to as per the tutorial sew this band on right along that seam allowance which i had stabilized on the back before so i'm just going to follow that seam allowance all the way around with a straight stitch this is a v-neck so there's plenty of room to go over your head. It doesn't have to stretch to go over your head like maybe a t-shirt would. So there's no need to use a stretch to stitch here. I will stitch this at my regular straight 2.5 inch stitch length. So after sewing that neck band on, you can see that I have a nice clean finish. No raw edges or no surged edges here, which will look nice from the inside. And that's all the way around. In the tutorial, in step seven, when you turn that neck tape completely toward the wrong side, it will tell you to leave the top two inches unstitched for now and just go ahead and stitch the rest of it. I did that on my tester one, but I didn't like cutting into that neck band as you'll see in the following steps. So I have just sewn it completely from edge all the way to the other edge here. So now, I am done with the twist. You can follow that into tutorial. It's very simple because you have not yet shown, you have not yet sewn the one shoulder and that front is split down the middle. So you'll just twist one side over and then you'll twist it in the same direction so that now it's right side up and you've created the twist. Easy peasy, fold them right sides together. And now we're finishing by sewing that opposite shoulder closed. So what I've done is I've used the temporary basting tape to hold this shoulder together here where their finished edges are because that will definitely slide under your serger especially or your needle. So for this shoulder, I am going to sew with a zigzag stitch. I can finish the edges later if I want to or I can just press that seam open but I like the finish of this better than on my tester one. 
Okay, so a few small things to do before you construct it or as you're going along can really change what it looks like inside. I'm gonna step up here and show you. This is, I finished those serger edges before I did the front. I find it much easier to go ahead and serge that all the way around first like I showed you and then much cleaner finish. And of course on this one, the second shoulder, I did not serge. I did that zigzag stitch so I could line up everything beautifully. But I, I like that I didn't have to cut into the seam. So I feel like these are cleaner finishes inside. Neither way is right, neither way is wrong. It's just two options. So I encourage you, if you haven't tried Itch to Stitch yet, this is a really good choice because it's a simple sew with a big payoff. This twist is different, it's unique. We have a lot of t-shirts in our closet, right? But just this little bit of a twist gives it something special. It's something special. So when you grab a t-shirt, that's great. We all have t-shirts that we grab all the time, but this takes it to just the next level, but it's not any harder to sew. It takes all but 30 seconds to make that twist. And you're not stretching a knit band, you're sewing it on one-on-one, -on -one, so it couldn't be easier. This is a great one to try. So. Thanks for joining me in the sewing room today. I hope you give the Zacapone a try. I think you'll be really happy. You'll feel really accomplished and it's super cute. And join me next time in the sewing room. Thank you, friends. See you next time.